Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge15, brought to you by ServiceNow. We're back, this is Dave Vellante, this is theCUBE, we're here at Knowledge. Each year at Knowledge, at the conference, we celebrate the winners of the uh, Hackathon competition. Uh, ServiceNow hosts this Hackathon, people come in, drop them in and go, they team up. It's a, it's a great little dynamic and, uh, and we're really pleased to have the winners of uh, this year's Hackathon on for the customer side. There's a couple, there's one's customer, one's partner. These are the customer winners. Ken Pruitt's with, he's the IT service uh, services a Administrator LKQ Keystone, and Scott Wyatt's the founder and CEO of Advantage Integrated Solutions, who's a service provider, interestingly, but you guys teamed up, and then they declared you the winners of the customer. So Scott, I want to start with you. So describe that, how'd that happen? You're a service provider, you're a partner, but you ended up on the customer side. Yeah, Dave, this is our first, Knowledge15 is our first uh, uh, event with ServiceNow, and it's huge, and we wanted to sign up for the hackathon and, and try, because we're developing in ServiceNow, and the, both the customers and the partners are, are welcome to there, and you know, very popular, um, and, you can, and you can combine. And so we were looking for um, uh, you know, uh, uh, team members to add, to, to, to build up a stronger team, and, and we found that in, in Ken and his colleague, and, um, and we went from there. So how'd they find you? <laughs> uh, I think he actually met up with my colleague, Chris Murphy. Um, okay. He's a, another one of our developers out of Nashville, and um, I actually met up with Chris, and I just got involved with them, and pretty much it was like, how can I help? And so okay. we, we took it from there. So, and, and the hackathon comprises, it's, it's all developers, right? Yeah. Low code, no code, heavy code. What are you guys? Which which <laughs> bucket it, do you fit? It, 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 it varies from different backgrounds. I, I come from a background of very little code, and then after getting into service now, I've I've learned that it's very extensible. So I've I've definitely learned a lot from the knowledge conference, and this is my second one. So I've definitely learned a lot. I, I didn't have much code prior to, but I've learned a lot here as well as the last one. And Scott, what about yourself? What's your background? Yeah, I'm I'm low code myself. Really? Uh, and we had but we, you know we had a couple of our other team members that are heavy code and 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 Ken did some heavy lifting as well in the uh, in the platform he's very skilled in the platform so you had some full stack developers yeah. complimenting you guys all right tell me about what you guys did what what did you develop so so this is based on something that the idea uh, we we brought because uh, we've been developing uh, you know been building uh, cloud based business apps for over a decade now right in other platforms and uh, and so one of them we we did a, a FEMA project with for hurricane katrina victim relief uh, in another platform this is pre pre-service nowadays, but this, so, so the idea, this is the app that we wish we'd had for Hurricane Katrina. So this is a big humanitarian app. It's, it's, uh, it's disaster victim relief for use by agencies like FEMA, Red Cross, uh, fire, police, other authorities, state agencies to provide uh, immediate, um, the, the, the immediate large scale uh, information and support from one smart, intelligent place, and that's a ServiceNow uh, app and uh, on the ServiceNow platform. Rather than having uh, a, a, a big call center with trying to spin up a big call center with hundreds and hundreds of people to support an earthquake, uh, fires, storms, something like that, instead you send them to this portal, and whether they go on their phone or they get to a computer somewhere that they can get. Uh, they go to the portal, the information's there for them, the services are there for them, it's all kept current, they go to one place and it, it makes so much sense. It's an out of the box response system. Yes. So how does it work in a, in a disaster without this app? So you, you're saying that, like I'm reminded of that uh, House of Cards episode, I don't know if you guys watch House of Cards, but there's a big disaster coming, they got the best guy, and he knows everything to do, so what would happen in that situation? They would set up it's a, a call it's center in anticipation. They know the event's coming. Depends. Sometimes they do, they and sometimes they don't. They, they, Katrina, yeah, right, fires, uh, 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 fires, fires, earthquakes, some floods. They, they have very little. So let's notice say they don't. Let's assume they don't know it's yeah. coming. That's, even, that's the worst case scenario. So they don't know it's coming. Then now it's like, okay, who's available? 
Where are we going to put this thing? What resources do we need there? So it's got to be a mess. It, it's all the king's horses and all the king's men, right? They, they just they scramble. And so you're scrambling. So it's all hands on deck. Yeah. Let's oh, go. Absolutely. Just get there. And you're just grabbing people from different, from different uh, both, both agencies and companies to, to come together that, that don't even normally work together. And, and we, we lived through this in, in Hurricane Katrina, right? I was there, and I worked there for months down in Louisiana on this, so I saw it firsthand. And that's, that's it. It's just a huge fire drill, and it's, it's in, it's in, it, it has to happen if you're going to do it manually, but it's insanely uh, difficult, complex, uh, inefficient. And then when you have uh, people's lives and their, and their health and safety and their property at risk in the, the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, tremendous risk there, right? And tremendous damage if you don't do it right. This is a way to do it right. Uh, Ken, I'm going to bring you into the discussion soon, but we need to set it up a little <laughs> bit further. So there's the processes around that, mm -hmm. and then there's obviously equipment and other things. So what, if from a process standpoint, okay, great, you understood that process because mm -hmm. you went through it. Um, and then how did that knowledge get transferred to you guys? Scott and his team sort of described it, or do you, did you have prior knowledge and um, awareness no. of this? No. Okay, no, so you had no. I had no prior knowledge of it. Response, no. expertise. No, I, I, I got the, the pitch from Scott, and he pretty much explained to me what the idea was for the application, and I, I took it from there as far as, you know, how do we want to make it look, what content do we need to provide to them on the front end, and then on the back end, what processes do we need to tackle? And we pretty much outlined those, and we, we made it happen. And we, and we fleshed it out there too, because, and this is a simple version. This is the front end. This is the, 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 the front line victim or uh, affected citizen portal, right? There's a whole lot in the back end. And, and what we built before was a lot of the back end operations, and that's all, that's all needed too. That's not what we did. We did the front end that was just, hey, th there's an earthquake and 100,000 people are displaced. They need information, they need services, they need it now. Where do you get it? Well, you're going to come to this portal, and you and the, you just send them to the portal. And whether they get to it on their phone or, or, or by any other means uh, on a, any device, th th they have it. And then they have what they need, or they can ask for what they need directly. And yes, you have people behind that portal, but it is so much more efficient. And you can spin it up in hours. It's, so there's it's, a it's request crazy. there for the service. Hey, I need help. Yes. Okay. Yep. And it's, it's, it fires it into the to the service now system. Yes. So now you've got that trapped. And then you've got a, a, the ability to respond to it. You, you're de managing that demand. There's yes. going to be more demand than supply, presumably, but you can at least communicate, right. and you can prioritize and, and triage. Everything's captured centrally. Everything is 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 um, visible. Everything is workable. So you have the different agencies. Maybe Red Cross is 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 doing uh, drinking water, food. Uh, FEMA is doing temporary living, uh, police and fire, utilities, hospitals. They all have their different roles. Those can be fulfillers in the system. They can all, you can, you can imagine taking that, that huge flow of requests, number one, categorizing those requests. What specifically do you want? Not just calling in and saying, I need help. Here are your options. Here's what these agencies can provide. So the, the user can go in. Number one, if they just need information, it's self-help. They don't have to talk to anybody. They just go in and it's all there for them because the providers are, are feeding it, right? If they need a service, they need help, then it's besides 911. 911 is make the phone call, right? But if it's not quite that bad, then you say, here are the services. Apply for something, and it will come in and it will be worked very quickly by the correct agency out of the box. So it's just so much cleaner. It's so much more advanced and so much more smart than, than, than the way things are typically handled. So, Ken, take us through the timeline. When did you, when did you first hear about this? What, 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 um, what day I, was it? Was it I, Monday? or the, the hackathon was... What's today, actually? Today's, today's Thursday. Thursday. Today's Thursday. There we go. The hackathon was, what, Tuesday, Tuesday. night? Yeah. So Tuesday yeah. night? Yeah. Tuesday night. I, that was the first I'd heard of it. So you heard, first heard of a Tuesday night at, I don't know, roughly what time? Was it 6 um, o'clock? It was probably closer to 7. So, okay, so 7 o'clock. Well, we, we started in the afternoon. So, so, so Ken dialed in a couple of hours into So you were whiteboarding we were. this? Yes. Right. So I'd had it. I'd thought about it a little bit in advance. You don't prepare anything in advance. You're not supposed to Can't design write any code build. in advance. No. That's not cool. No. But you can. <laughs> I'd, I'd thought about it and actually wrote Think it about literally, the shower. literally back of the app, napkin yeah, yeah. in the previous sessions or two. And there is some preparation. I mean, if you go into hackathon without preparing at all, I mean that's okay, right? Yeah, but you're just wasting a bunch of time up front. Well, you just say, yeah, you know, you just say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I spend the first three hours thinking about it. I could have thought about it before, yeah. so, and, we, and, and we were serious. We really wanted to do something that was meaningful and that was that was impressive, um, and that was that 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 that, uh, that that could be impactful, 
and show something very different on the ServiceNow platform and with this product. And so this seemed to fit, and then we fleshed it out. So I, I had the, the genesis of the idea, and I was like, yeah, it could work like this. This is what we, God, we wish we had. This one would be amazing if you had it, right? And you can do it in ServiceNow. And so then we brought it, and, right. and you know, Ken and Chris and, and, and our guys just brought it to life. So you started in the afternoon, and you did like a Chris Pope whiteboard session yeah. at the TLEO, right? Yeah. And then, then Ken, you come in, mm -hmm at seven o'clock and then what start coding it's pretty much i got i got the pitch from scott and understood what we were what you we were saw doing the visual saw, and you said okay saw, saw the visual that he had written out on the on the napkin and then and chris met. and the others had had we'd, we'd been working on it for a little yeah. while and, and his colleague chris and and, and and our guys kit and chase um were all uh you know working through it so we, we roughed it out and then yeah we had it we had some 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 structure when yeah. when you came in yeah. and he showed me that content that they had already and we, I, I started from there how did you attack the problem um, initially, just starting with the layout, you know, I, I feel like presentation is everything and we want to make this as simple as possible for these people who might be in a panic or who might be flustered, you know, make it easy for them to, when they see this. It's, it's inviting, but it's also easy to navigate so that they don't spend too much time trying to figure out how to get help. So you and said, okay, what am I going to see as a user coming it, in? Exactly. Right, what and pages am I going to look at? What exactly. content am I going to see? How's it going to be laid out? Exactly. And, okay. and, and the main point of that was to get them everything they need up front so they have to do as little clicking as possible to get through to everything else. Okay, so you started there and then said what? Hey, guys, what do you think? It, yeah, pretty and much. Said, okay, move that over there. What about this? You missed that. And that's, that's where the collaboration and came in. And then you the iterate. Yeah. Right. That's where the collaboration came in. And we made tweaks. We made adjustments on the fly. And ultimately, we came out with a pretty nice product in the end. How big was the team? Five guys? Five. <laughs> Five, Five guys. And what were the different roles? So you obviously were the catalyst. Yeah, right? I, I didn't, I, so I don't think I wrote you uh, brainchild. anything. I was content, yeah, so okay. I, I get it. I've done this for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then I was there firsthand for that. Right, for that you were kind, kind of, of the domain expert, yeah. as I could say. Okay, yeah. great. So I could I could see that I could see the problem. I'd been there, and I and I actually and I'm familiar with generally familiar with how it's how it's handled typically, and there's there's so much better way to do it, right? And then these guys just, these guys brought it together. So, I, and I got to believe this is, this is not the last time we're going to be uh, collaborating. How did you divide the, the tasks up? I mean, who did what? Uh, it, it was kind of on the fly of one thing that if one of us couldn't figure out how to do it, we'd ask somebody else and they'd be like, yeah, I think I, think I know how to do that. And, you know, they, they take that on. And we're like, all right, while you're working on that, let me work on something else. And it just kept, it, it was hot potato. If, if you know how to fix it, let's work on it now. If you don't, Ask somebody else if they know how to fix it. They'll work on it, and we'll move on to something else. And it so all you knew what had, you knew what the end game was, and yeah. there was plenty of stuff to do. Right. So you just kept doing it, yeah. and, <laughs> and you saw it come together. It's amazing. Together. We didn't know we didn't we didn't know each other, right? <laughs> but we just you put just like you're going to be together for eight hours, and you're going to produce something amazing. Do it, and that was it. And then what what times does the clock? What, what times the bell ring? Uh, to stop. New, midnight. Yeah. yeah. Clock stops at midnight. Straight straight through from about and three four, about three forty five in the afternoon until midnight. So. It's like that show where they give you some ingredients and you guys got to make something, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and the yeah. clock stops. And yep. we just didn't have one pre-made in the oven already. <laughs> but yeah, right. But you got a working product out of yeah, it, and did. it did evolve actually. So it wasn't that I, I had it completely formulated. It actually evolved and improved. And so, so Ken, Chris, everybody added to it, and you said, "Oh my gosh, yes! Oh, that's a, that's brilliant, mm -hmm. right?" So one of the things we added, I'll just give you an idea: missing persons report. There was functionality we didn't we didn't I, I had no idea that it could be in scope, and they said, "Oh." My gosh, people have, if they have uh, loved ones that they're missing or friends, they have their pictures on their phones. They can email a report and include the picture and it goes directly into the system. They don't even talk to anybody, but it comes in and you have a picture and the information on who's missing and what the details are. So it was, there was some great ads to it. So what happens now? So, well, actually, so you spun this up in one of these 40,000 AWS <laughs> instances, right? Yeah. And so now it lives. Next time we do this, we have to get a, a demo. Yeah, right, we got to do that. We got to just fire it up on a laptop. Absolutely. So I could see this somewhere. There's a URL somewhere that I can and go to. Yeah. Well, and you know what? We're happy to continue to talk about it and see if there's if there's a home for it. We we even talked about it being different at different levels. You could do it at the corporate or organizational level as business continuity. Companies are big enough, and we talked to some of the the, the, the major companies here, the representatives, and they said, "Ooh, we kind can of see our plan. We can yeah. see that absolutely, as opposed to the red book." <laughs> yeah, because well, yeah. you say, and they have yeah. their, their policies, they have their information. Hey, somebody laughed. You know what I'm talking about, if, right? Yeah. Who's got the red book out there? <laughs> but but if, if 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 headquarters goes dark, right? If if you say, "Well, you you've got some thousands of people 
that, that don't know what to do. Where do they go? What, are they just supposed to start calling people or emailing? It's like, no, no, you go to the system that you're already on ServiceNow. Go to the ServiceNow app. This is going to tell you everything and help you with anything that you need. So you can centralize that at the, at the organization, the corporate level. You could do it at the state level. Uh, state agencies could use it uh, certainly all the way up to Red Cross, FEMA, and those, and those groups. And so we're happy to continue to talk and, and consider how it could be applied and even work with ServiceNow. It's something that ServiceNow could carry forward and actually participate at a, a, at a big humanitarian um, level with something like this maybe further developed, right? We, we did it in a day. I was going to say, so if you've got a couple more days. Yeah, you know, a couple uh, more days, it's twice so. as good. Yeah. So are you going to continue to develop the Definitely. The um, app I, I love the app. I definitely intend to make some tweaks and make some changes and, and flesh it out further. See you what put we put it in the store? If we get to that point, definitely. Then yeah. Why so not? we'll talk to we'll talk to anybody who's interested in, uh, in, in in doing something with it because you know it, it was a great exercise and a great challenge, uh, but uh, you know it didn't help anybody, but it could. So you say, well, where where might it, right? Where might we employ this? How many? What was what, what was the competition like? How many teams were you up against? Oh, dozens of teams, right? And very very strong, very good people. The five finalists, we saw all their apps. Very impressive, yeah, right? Yeah. And didn't know we really didn't know we you know. We, we really we tried to win, right? But we didn't know because there's some really good apps there in the finalists. There. That's impressive. Got to be humbling. Congratulations, thank, thank you, Scott Dave. and Ken. Really appreciate you guys coming on the cube <laughs> and sharing with us the the process. And uh, I I can't wait to hear more. We'll be, we'll be watching. Thanks. Thanks. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is the cube. We're live at Knowledge 15. Right back. <laughs>